the list view is meant to display a lot of widgets. So while it's similar to a column and a row too, because you can change the axis, they're really meant for different purposes. A column is meant for things like the main architecture of your app widgets. So you'll have a handful of sections stacked on top of one another, or maybe a card where you have three things stacked on top of each other. Whereas a list view is meant for displaying things from like a backend call from your database or an API call where you're returning a lot of things. And that's because it has optimizations built in. So for instance, only widgets that are visible are mounted and painted. Whereas in a column, all the children are mounted and painted. So let me show you how it works. So we've got our list view here and let's dump in some child widgets. So we just got a container and let's change the color so we can see it. Give it a little padding on the left and the right and round off some corners just because it makes it look nice. Okay, so we've got our list view right here. And the first option is your axis. So whether the children are stacked on top of one another, like a column, or next to each other, like a row, most of the time it's gonna be vertical. And that's because typically when you're displaying stuff from your database or an API call, they're vertical scrolling. So you think about like Airbnb or Amazon, that main axis you're scrolling down. But just to take a look, here's our vertical. And and if we set it to horizontal, then it's scrolling this direction. Okay, let's set it back for a second and let's look at spacing. So let's duplicate this a couple times so we can get a handle on how spacing works. So instead of using padding on the children widgets, you can use item spacing. So if I give this 12, it's going to put 12 pixels between each of the children. And then you also have options to set these things from a variable. So if you went dynamic spacing, whether you want to apply this 12 spacing to the beginning and the end. So you can see I added it there and added it to the top and you've got it added to the bottom right here. Or if you want to specify that to have more or less on the top and the end, you can do that here. The next option, shrink wrap, determines whether the list view will shrink to the size of its children. So let me delete a few here so we can actually see this in action. So without it, it's stretching to fill the parent here. But if I turn it on and you can look right here, it's going to shrink down to its children. And of course, if I apply that spacing, you're going to have that applied. Next, we've got an option to set whether this is the primary scroll controller. That's an advanced topic that we'll have a video on later, so we're not going to cover it here. And then finally, you're given the option about the direction of the children inside this list view, whether it populates in the order of top to bottom or bottom to top. Now, all of our children are the same right now, so let me just add some text in so you can see this. All right, so now each of our containers has a text inside and it's just ordered. So this one here is the one down to five. Now, if we reverse it, you can see that now it's populating from the bottom bottom to the top. Now, when would you use this? Well, we actually have a great example that we've all become accustomed to, and it's this, these chat interfaces like ChatGPT. So here we've got a list view and it's set to reverse so it populates from the bottom because each new chat, whether it's the users or the large language model, will populate from the bottom. So this is a very common use case, and that's list views in Flutterflow.